Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the four hour chart of silver, and I've drawn the primary trend line in from the low that we had. I think that's the lowest that we had. Let me double check and make sure. Yeah, so that's from the lowest prices that we had. And you can see that the trend line has survived this challenge. Uh, we've turned back up. The MACD has turned back up. I think if we go out to the eight hour, um, it's still in negative territory. So what does this mean? Well, how much cheaper can silver get really? I think the when we look at the Silver Institute information here, it's going to be pretty obvious that um, they're cooking the books. We've known that for some time now, but how long can they go selling super cheap silver um, as long as they can keep the system together or they can keep the system together as long as they can do that. So main news is that the, the ma major turn uptrend is still intact here starting back in January. And of course, this is the third year, I think, it's at least the second year, the third year where they had this December effect where I point out we always get those lows when the Silver Eagles aren't for sale. So you can see they dip it low when people can't get the coins and then, and then when they finally can get the coins, then the price starts up. So we've gone about three dollars from there almost three dollars looks like the uptrend is resuming we'll have to wait and see like i pointed out before there's a lot of congestion up around eighteen dollars so we'll see how we follow through on the week now the silver institute information is out here's the chart uh this is kind of shady it's kind of strange here if you look at this the uh just the resolution of this picture maybe it's just because they grabbed it from a pdf or something but um, maybe the numbers are just as shady as this image so we can see here i'm going to actually do a video in the future covering this in depth because it needs to be taken apart in depth so i'm just going to go over the highlights here and and we'll in a later video, we'll go in depth into the information here. Now, I've pointed out before that this is these things are revised. They not only revise the the new numbers for each year, but they actually go back and revise the previous numbers. So I've done the comparisons of these. You go back to 2010 and look at what they had reported for 2007 in 2010, and it's different than what they report now. So they're constantly changing the numbers, and that's just like the government. Uh, you can't trust anything that they say. They actually alter history. Uh, it's I don't really have a problem if you want to make things compare, uh, comparable moving forward. Then, But you need to keep the old series going so that people can actually make a comparison. If you're constantly changing the factors that are in the numbers or constantly rejiggering the numbers, the numbers are meaningless. And, of course, that's what they want because they don't want people to understand the implication of what those numbers show. But just the highlights here, you can see that the mine production came in here at 886. That's going to be a record. So that's going to be interesting for someone to explain how we can have record mine production and record low prices uh, for the time frame. Well, 2006, we had lower prices, but uh, significantly lower mine production. Uh, we have two years here with net government sales and a dash, so no more government uh, silver supply. And so we come in with a total supply of over a billion ounces. Um, and uh, this scrap came in here. You can see that came in at 146. That's the lowest number we've had on scrap. But that's a surprisingly high number, considering that for a significant part of the year, there was actually a premium for the scrap. So I'm very suspicious about that number. The other really big number here is going to be the physical surplus deficit. And you can see another year where we're in deficit. We really didn't have uh, any years that weren't in deficit in the last five, except for 2012. This is after the price crash. So we're back to a big 130 million ounces of deficit. Where's all the silver coming from? Good question. Uh, I'd like to know the answer to that. So definitely some shady stuff going on there. But like I said, we'll, we will get further in depth into that uh, when we do an entire video series on this. Now, I wanted to 
zoom in on this this character, uh, this person. I don't have anything personally against this person. I just it, it was something that really kind of bothered me. It, this has been bothering me for a while now. But this this is one of the blogs run by Michael Snyder. Michael Snyder is kind of in the alternative community as we are news reporting, and I'm sure that he is well aware of how difficult it is to make money doing that. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of you are aware, aware as well of how difficult it is to fight the mainstream media. So I don't begrudge anybody who's trying to make a living blogging, but I do if they are trying to sell doctrine. And uh, this, I, I don't have a problem against writing a book and selling it. Uh, you can see he's got this rapture verdict and this uh, beginning of the end. But you have to be very, very careful. I'm a Christian. A lot, of, a lot of people are Christians, but they don't make their living at Christianity. And there's a very good reason for that because we're warned against it. And the truth of the matter is, is that the truth doesn't sell. If people weren't coming and rushing and giving Jesus tons of money because the message was so popular. And certainly people weren't rushing to give the Apostle Paul a whole bunch of money or John as he was rotting in prison. So that ought to make you take note. If you see people who are in the Christian business and they're making money, you need to closely examine what they say. Now this article for the most part, it's accurate. But, of course, I've covered Venezuela. We know what's happening in Venezuela. We have some lunatic left-wing socialist dictator in there. And he has put price controls on the farmers. He's put price controls on the shops. And no surprise, no one's growing any food and no one's selling any food anymore because they have to do it at a loss. So that's not rocket science to figure that out. Now, the big fear, the doom porn, the fear porn that's being sold here, um, selling the fear that this is coming to America. Yes, it could come to America if totalitarian socialist dictator took, took over and outlawed markets. That's true. It could. Uh, hopefully, with the direction of this next election, we're going to go the other way. If any uh, of the conservatives and libertarians can agree on anything, it's probably that we need to have free markets. So hopefully that's not going to happen, but it could. But let's get back to the topic, and that is selling the fear. There's a lot of money to be made in this prep stuff. And I, I don't begrudge anybody making money selling prep things. But when you start to teach what I will call false doctrine uh, for the purpose of selling stuff, then for me, that's when it crosses the line. I think you, you'll see here, we're going to play this interview on, uh, this is uh, Jim Baker. And if you don't know who Jim Baker is, Jim Baker was head of the PTL club, which is a huge, basically it was like a Christian Disneyland. It was gigantic. They were making theme parks and and all kinds of stuff, crazy stuff. Ended up having an affair, going to jail, but he's back. <laughs> it's kind of amazing that these guys can actually make a comeback after being thoroughly disgraced and going to prison, but they do. And so they're selling fear here, and I'm going to point out some things as we listen to this. So let's listen to Michael Snyder on The Jim Baker Show. How many know that gun sales has gone up for the last six months in a row. Did you know that? Zach, did you see that headline yes. today? Yes, I did. Gun sales set record for six months in a row. Why? I mean, why would gun sales be going up? What? What? Do you know what I don't know? I don't know why. Do you know? have any idea? Well, I think people are becoming concerned what they're seeing. Violent crime in many U.S. cities around this country is up double digits. Uh, in cities all over the nation, we're seeing an increase in crime. Uh, after years and years, there were declines. Crime was going down for such a long time, Jim. But now crime in many cities, many of our large cities, is up by double digits. But I think it's larger than that. I think people are concerned about what's happening. They're preparing. I know my wife and I are preparing more than ever before. We've got more food and supplies than we've ever had before. Uh, us personally and they're also selling more food and supplies than they ever have before as well yeah, i think people 
In, in the pit of their stomachs, most Americans know what's coming, even though the mainstream media is such a powerful force. They're telling us everything's going to be okay. Well, you know, Jesus said there's going to be a time when there's no food to eat. Jesus says this before he comes back. That's what Jesus said there's going to be a time when there's no food to eat. This is the NCV version. There will be times when there is no food for people to eat. Wow. What he said. It's very clear, very plain. Just read Matthew 24. I'll get you one. It's other places in the Bible. But read Matthew 24. What will happen before Jesus returns? What is the sign? Yeah. Even the Antichrist is in there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I completely agree, Jim. One uh, scripture that was very revealing to me and that showed that there's going to be tremendous persecution of Christians before the rapture. Or well, the rapture is also known as the resurrection in scripture. No, that, that's confusion I don't have time to go into. But this man is very confused. He, he may be sincere, but he's very confused. It's the same thing. The rapture is when we're resurrected, we're gathered to meet Jesus. So I wanted to read something very quickly out of Revelation chapter 20, starting in uh, midway through verse 4. It says, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus and for the word of God, beheaded. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehands or on their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who take place in the first resurrection. I don't know what a part of first people don't understand. And the first resurrection includes those who were beheaded, who refused to take the part of the mark of the beast, who went through that horrible persecution. So if the resurrection took place before the rapture, then how can the first resurrection include these believers? Okay, so I don't have time to go into the sloppy exegesis and sloppy theology that this guy uses and wrong Bible versions. You can go on to my YouTube channel and I've done a number of videos and tend to do more but haven't had the time. But uh, you could, the logic is completely flawed, for one, because it's teaching, even though it's this MEV, whatever that is, that uh, these people were beheaded because they refused to take the mark of the beast. Well, weren't, aren't we told that if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell? So if you can't buy or sell and you buy all these preps, uh, then they're going to come and behead you. So I'm not really sure what the purpose of buying all these preps are. It's, uh, it's, it's infuriating. It's very frustrating to me. And so, but there's so much deception out there today. Indeed. And the Apostle Paul actually warned us about this nearly 2,000 years ago in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He said, Now, brothers, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and concerning our gathering together unto him, when does that happen? Now, I've done a video on the, on the rapture already, and even this MEV version was, which is obviously some Jesuit version of the Bible, even this version notes there's two events here coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together unto him. So those are two different events. But he doesn't even see that. And he's actually quoting a verse that's trying to warn Christians to not be afraid of the day of the Lord as if it's already begun, because it can't begin until the rapture occurs. He's going to take this verse, turn it on its head, and we're going to see why. It happens at the rapture. It happens at the resurrection. We ask, you not, uh, we ask you not to let your mind be quickly shaken or be troubled, neither in spirit nor by word nor by letter, coming as though from us, as if the day of Christ is already here. Do not let anyone deceive you. Every Christian should underline that in their Bibles. Okay, if you look on the, you see on the right-hand side there, see those big stacks of preps that they're selling? We've got our Christmas trees behind us. It's almost like the PTL. This is the resurrection of the PTL club here. Again, back at the trough, making money, uh, bilking the sheep. In any way, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and his worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself as God, referring to the abomination of desolation we read about in Matthew chapter 24, Daniel chapter 29, 
So it said, do not let anyone deceive you. We've got so many supposedly spirit-filled Christians, ministers standing up there today talking about we're about to be caught away. We've got all these books where the Apostle Paul says, don't be deceived by a letter. Well, people are buying millions of books that say a pre-tribulation or rapture is And I believe you're selling books too, Michael. Coming. A pre-tribulation rapture is not coming. The Bible is not trying to trick us. You know, these pre-tribbers, they, they don't have any scripture to point to. So they start getting into mind games and they start twisting scriptures and say, well, if you squint really hard, maybe you can see something over here and you got to put it with over here. The Bible is very clear. Just read right. what the Bible says. It says it's there's not clear. a pre-tribulation rapture. Jim Baker says he's... No, the Bible does not say there is not a pre-tribulation rapture. And what they're reading from isn't the Bible anyway, but let, let them continue. I'm not going to try to convert anybody on this, but I am because millions of believers are being hurt by this doctrine. Millions of Christians are not going to be prepared. Millions of Christians in America are going to die waiting for a pre-tribulation rapture. That is not going to happen. We need to tell the truth. Very few people are telling the truth. That's why I love Jim Baker. I love what they're trying to do. They are dare to go on the airwaves and tell the truth, even though it costs some supporters, it costs some money, but they're, they're telling you the truth. And so I've avoided it for a long time, but finally I felt God telling me, you've got to address this because the time is at hand. Someone's got to put this in an easy to understand way, mm -hmm. what the Bible really says, yeah. explain it to the people, right. tear down this false doctrine, okay. because, you know, people, so many believers, they're not getting prepared and they're not getting ready for what God is about to do on this earth, because a great move of God is coming. What's that? A great move of God is coming. Where do you get that? But people are saying, it's not for me, because I'm about to be pulled out of here. Hmm interesting stuff so hopefully you could see what I saw there uh, it's hard for me to share my mind on these things I've studied these people for a few decades and so they jump out to me like just like a bright light uh, what they're up to what they do this it's actually what they do is in the Bible it's right here in the King James Bible, 2 Peter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You see what that means? They go to prison, they molest children, and then the Bible is and God are besmirched by that. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. That's what's going to happen to false teachers. That's what's going to happen to people who are pretending to be Christians, who are pretending to be believers, but their main goal is to make merchandise of Christians and to make a whole bunch of money by selling fear. Now, is Michael Steiner one of those? I don't know. I'm not God. I can't decide. Is Jim Baker one of those? I don't know either. There are a lot of signs there, but the signs are clear that you can't serve God and serve money. That's that's the way it works. A lot of us who are in the alternative media space, we're just barely getting by. There are also a lot of people who are in the Christian ministry business that are getting fabulously wealthy. Jesus was very clear. He said, you cannot serve both God and money. Now, if you want to listen to something that kind of clarifies the Thessalonians verses that Michael Snyder is quoting there, I've put the few videos, I intend to do a lot more videos on scriptures and how to understand them and the rapture and going through the book of Revelation. Eventually, I hope to go through the entire Bible. They're free. They're free for anyone. They're on the site, uh, my YouTube site, and uh, you can watch this last one on here, Revelation Day of the Lord. It goes deeply into these issues, but heaven forbid that any of us I would warn you very strongly, if you're tempted to try to make money off of the knowledge or wisdom that God has given you, it's a, it's a mistake. 
the Bible warns strongly against that. We are to work hard and, uh, and selling fear is not a way to make a living. And we'll talk to you next time.